What's up guys, it's JJ and welcome to Winter Circle. So today, uh, well tonight, the Darlington Southern 500 just finished. Uh, it was honestly not a very exciting race in my opinion until I'd say the last 100 laps of the 367 mile, uh, 367 lap, 500 mile race. Um, not much was happening, it was kind of slow, but... So, in those last 80 to 100 laps, everything got going there, and man, did we get a great finish um, in this race. So, to start taking the green flag, we see the first playoff driver who has troubles, Daniel Suarez, failed inspection, um, pre-race inspection three times, ended up uh, not getting to qualify and having to do a pass-through penalty, at the green flag, so he started a lap down, basically, and then, you know, so on the pole was Joey Logano, who won in the spring, I talked about him in our, like, preview, weekend preview, um, video, as he was one of my favorites, he started on pole, he led most of the beginning of this race, there was an early caution for rain, it was a really short rain shower that they never even red flagged the race. They just rode around under caution for, I'd say, probably five or ten laps. Um, got back going green. There was a competition caution in lap 35. And then we see some playoff drivers start to get in trouble. Chase Elliott, who was my pick to win this weekend, man, was I off on that. Um, qualified back in the, I think, I want to say 23rd. Um, and then... Uh, got in some trouble, you know, he was just, the car looked like it was starting to come to him, he made it up to, I'd say, like, 15th, um, and then he just kind of spun out on his own, from all we could tell from the broadcast, spun out, um, you know, ended up not hitting anything, but came back on the track, Chase Briscoe ran into him, um, not too hard. Briscoe was able to continue. He was not competitive at all the rest of the race. Honestly, Chase Briscoe probably would not have been competitive even if this had not happened. But Chase Elliott, um, the control arm, the toe link in his right rear was done. They couldn't fix it even with the um, extra four minutes to the damaged vehicle policy. Um, that damage vehicle clock got extended to 10 minutes for the playoffs. Um, but yeah, they couldn't, um, repair that. So he ended up finishing in 36th. Later on in stage one, Kyle Larson felt like his engine was, um, about to expire again. And, you know, ended up coming down pit road. They tried to see if there was anything wrong with it. Couldn't see anything. He ended up losing, I think it was four laps at the time. And, um... You know, but he got back on the track. Whatever the issue was seemed to clear itself up, and he was able to rebound um, by the end of the race, kind of back towards 10th, 15th, around in there, which was honestly incredible when you see that he was down, you know, four laps at Darlington. Um, yes, then stage two, nothing really happened. Um, I didn't, I forgot to mention stage one, um, after these cautions. William Byron ended up getting into the lead, and he kind of dominated stage one then uh, throughout till the end of stage one. Pit cycle, that's when we see the Toyotas come up. Um, stage two was dominated by Toyotas. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin, and Christopher Bell as well. All four were in the top five most of that um, stage two with William Byron. He kind of split the Toyotas. He was in third most of that stage. Um... But, you see, um, Kyle Busch ended up winning Stage 2. Um, not a whole lot to say about Stage 2. It was kind of, kind of got a little boring, you know, watching um, not much action, nothing really happening. And this is a long, long race, um, as you will see by some of the things that happened in Stage 3. So, in Stage 3, you know, we get a weird caution during a pit cycle that kind of... Jumbles up the field. Um, Kyle Busch, Truex, and Hamlin were all state had not yet pitted, and all the rest of the playoff drivers had pitted. Um, 
when a caution came out for Kevin Harvick's car just caught fire. I mean, a blaze. Um, I've never, it's been a while if I've ever seen a car just go up in that much flames. Um, you know, that's another thing that with this next gen car, while it's giving us great racing, stuff like that, they've got to figure out because somebody could get, end up getting seriously hurt again. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to see Harvick was able to park it and get out of the car safely at least. Um, hated it because he was running in the top 10 and you always hate to see a car go out for something that, you know, the driver, crew chief, nobody could really control. Especially that, it wasn't even like an engine or something went out. It was just the car went up in flames. Um, uh, from watching the broadcast, I assume it's something with like rubber buildup from the tires, but... You know, I don't, I don't know. Um, they were thinking maybe it was an engine issue. Ended up being, Kevin Harvick said it was not an engine issue. So, um, I don't know what happens there. Uh, NASCAR's got to get that figured out. But that kind of shuffled up uh, the the running order of the entire race. You had guys like Eric Jones, Michael McDowell, Brad Keselowski, um, Bubba Wallace, who then kind of got jolted up toward the front along with Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, and Denny Hamlin. Um, they they were up in the up up front the entire race. Um and they dominated. Honestly, those three Joe Gibbs cars, um so I don't really know who was in the lead. You know, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex kinda went back and forth with the lead the entire race. Um and then uh, with about, you know, 40 laps to go, Martin Truex Jr., um, it was some kind of belt came loose is what they kept saying on the broadcast, something with power steering, something went wrong, and the car was done, um, he was out of the race, so, um, that's another car that didn't finish, um, didn't finish the race, couldn't, couldn't make it to the end, long race, like I said earlier, um, so, yeah, um, then we go, you know, with that, um, later on, Cody Wears hits the wall for, like, the 10 millionth time in the race, you know, normal Rick Ware racing, um, stuff, and ends up just stopping on the track. I don't really know why he's, if his car just went out, he hit the wall pretty hard. Um, brought out another caution, we have pit stops, and during the caution flag, Kyle Busch, his engine goes up in smokes. So, the two dominant cars all night, you had Martin Truex, who just missed the playoffs, and it looked like he was going to be the car to beat um, and get his win a week too late. He's out now. Uh, Kyle Busch, who was the second most dominant car and was the best car at times, and it looked like it was his race to lose at that point, his engine blows under caution. So, that brings Eric Jones into the lead with about 20 laps to go. Um, Tyler Reddick restarts second, Denny Hamlin's in third. Honestly, at this point, I think it's Denny Hamlin. Um, he's going to find a way to get around the two. So, on the restart, Eric Jones does get the clean air. Um, gets out in front by about two, three car lengths. Not a whole lot. Denny Hamlin gets around Tyler Reddick, and at that point, I'm like, then he's going to find some way around uh, the 43. But no matter how close Denny got, you know, Eric would get it out to about five tenths. And then Denny reel him back in two tenths. Um, on the NASCAR.com that I'm looking at right now, it says Eric Jones, obviously, as I'm about to say, ended up winning the race, um, which is a great win for him. Great win for the 43. Great to see it back in victory lane. Um I love Eric Jones. Uh, Eric Jones is a great um, guy. I think a very talented race car driver that just kind of got uh, booted out into a lesser car just to make some space. Um, and Eric Jones is a very talented driver that I think has shown this year how he can elevate a car. Um, I think he's deserving of a top ride still, but he ended up winning his second Southern 500 um, by two car lengths, so Denny really did close in the last two, three laps, he was right on his bumper, but Eric was able to hold him off, so 
you know, so many playoff drivers struggled mightily in this race. Um, we'll talk about that in just a sec when we look at the points. But here's the top 10 for your Southern 500. Uh, Eric Jones, as I said earlier, wins the race. Denny Hamlin finishes second. Tyler Reddick's third. Joey Logano is fourth, who after the first stage, first run really, um, really fell back and ended up making his way back up in the top five. Christopher Bell finishes fifth. Michael McDowell, another great run for him, finishes sixth. Brad Keselowski has another good run, um, finishes eighth, no, seventh. William Byron finishes eighth. He was really fast. He was definitely the fastest Hendrick car all night. Bubba Wallace finishes ninth. And Alex Bowman rounds out your top ten, who is a guy that needed a good run, and man, did he get it. So, Chase Elliott uh, ended up finishing last in 36th. I'm just going to kind of go through some of these playoff guys. Kyle Larson ended up rebounding from that engine issue earlier, finishing 12th. Ryan Blaney was in 13th. Um, who are some of the other big playoff names? Kyle Busch finished 30th with his um, engine after it blew. And Kevin Harvick was in 33rd after uh, his car caught on fire and almost burned to pieces. So, the playoff standings are very different going into um, Kansas next weekend. So, this is kind of where we sit. The last guy in right now on points is Daniel Suarez. He's plus two. Kyle Busch is plus eight. Alex Bowman is actually plus 10, so a great night for Bowman, um, you know, and he's won Kansas earlier, so, you know, maybe I was wrong about Bowman, um, you know, they were not good at all throughout the summer months, but he had a good run tonight, and with a lot of guys having bad runs, he gains a lot of points. Chase Elliott is only in ninth, only 14 uh, points to the good, he came in 40. 33 points um, to the good, I think is what they said. Um, yeah, that is a massive drop for him. You know, a lot of people, including myself, thought there was no way he was going to get booted out, eliminated in the first round. I still don't think it, there is. I don't think it's likely for him to get booted out, but it could happen. It very well could. Um, Ross Chastain is plus 15. Kyle Larson plus 17. You know, Kyle Larson was actually underneath the cut line when he had that engine issue, so great rebound for that team. Blaney, plus 20. Tyler Reddick is plus 23. Christopher Bell is plus 28. Denny Hamlin's plus 30. William Byron is plus 32. And Joey Logano is plus 38. So the guys under the cut line that would be eliminated at this point. Austin Sendrick is minus 2 points to the good. Austin Dillon is only minus 4 so he made up some ground. Chase Briscoe is minus 10 and Kevin Harvick is minus 13. So, as I just said, you know, big, big moves um, in the playoff standings after the first race. So many guys had trouble. Um, so many guys really just didn't have good runs and had, like I said, not just had trouble throughout the entire race, whether it was their car going out, wrecks, engines, penalties, Pit, pit road penalties, speeding penalties, stuff like that even. Um, so many playoff guys struggled. So it really was just complete madness. Um, but yeah, it was a great finish to a great race. Um, Eric Jones got the win. Uh, congratulations to him and all of Petty GMS. Uh, technically their first win as a team. You know, Petty's won before, but GMS part of it, who is the majority owner at this point. Um, their first win in the Cup Series. Congrats to them, and yeah, it's going to be a great race at Kansas. Um, so we'll see y'all um, here on Victory Lane again on Thursday for our Kansas preview. And it's there's some rumblings that we might get some really big news um, at some point this week. So look out for probably another whole video on that news if it does break this week. Um, if not, you'll only see the one episode on Thursday. We'll have Winter Circle tomorrow and Friday. Make sure you subscribe to our Next Topic Media uh, YouTube channel here, Next Topic Sports on TikTok. Go look at our Instagrams, uh, my Instagram. I'd love to be able to interact with y'all over there. So, yeah, um, a very chaotic playoff race at Darlington. A great uh, first race, great first playoff race finish. 
Uh, and congrats to Eric Jones and his team. So we'll see y'all tomorrow for Winter Circle and then Thursday with another Victory Lane.